is time for everyone to gather round the breakfast table. And here, as in every phase of life in the little Eskimo dwelling, there is much crowding together. Hello, I'm Jim Brill. You have probably heard my voice before because I have narrated hundreds of educational sound films since our company started operations in 1928. You may recall that Thomas Edison was one of the first Americans to work seriously with film. Edison said, I believe that the imparting of exact information through the motion picture camera will be a matter of course in all of our schools and that the printed lesson will be largely supplemental and not paramount. But movies rapidly became entertainment. Although the Eastman Kodak Company made a number of silent educational films, the real potential of film as a communication medium was not apparent until sound brought a new dimension to the motion picture theaters of America. Almost immediately, Western Electric formed a subsidiary company called Electrical Research Products Incorporated known as Irby to the trade. In 1928, we started work on educational sound films. I was privileged to be among the first to work in this new medium. It didn't take us long to realize that teachers needed tools they could use in the classroom. To fill this need, we began to produce films like Eskimo Children. By the late 1930s, we were able to plan films in series and we began to work with the University of Chicago under the sponsorship of its president, Robert Hutchins. Among our distinguished collaborators at the university was the great physiologist Anton J. Carlson, who worked with us on a human biology series that included a film about the heart and circulation. In this film, the sight of a living, beating heart electrified educators everywhere, and this scene, taken from inside the heart of a horse, 
set a new high for camera technique. The consequent success of our films seemed to promise the end of the company's long struggle to show a profit. In the meantime, William Benton, an advertising innovator, then vice president of the University of Chicago, took over our film company, forming Encyclopedia Britannica Films, EBF, as it was called, a sister corporation to his Encyclopedia Britannica. In the meantime, private competition to EBF began to enter the AV field, helping to focus the academic, creative, and commercial forces in the field towards greater classroom effectiveness. But the world of knowledge was also changing. We were at the threshold of the atomic era. Scientists were experimenting with rockets and dreaming of space travel. Then, in 1957, the Soviet Union launched its first Sputnik into orbit, awakening America to the fact that our schools were not geared to handle the knowledge explosion in science. More than that, we expected students to learn many times what we had had to learn, and in the same number of classroom hours that my generation enjoyed. To bridge the gap, the federal government began to support modernization of education, and at long last, with the signing of the National Defense Education Act by President Eisenhower, the first nationwide step had been taken in the recognition of film as a necessary tool for education. Let's take a look at some of the ways this vital medium can contribute to the educational process. How many children in the world can witness the eruption of a volcano? The motion picture camera enables each of us to participate in events we couldn't otherwise expect to see. For the classroom teacher, film vividly and accurately enriches the experience of students of any age. Does the average classroom house the equipment needed to x-ray the human digestive system? Through the medium of film, classroom students can witness the violent surface of the sun. From a vantage point in the classroom, every student can join the hurricane hunters on a flight into the eye of one of nature's most awesome spectacles, a hurricane. Okay, according to radar, uh, looks like we got a 20 mile wide uh, high. Our altitude is 18,000 feet. Our winds have dropped down now to about 45 to 50 knots and pressures are uh, falling also. We're uh, approaching the eye of the storm now. Meteorologists stand by to mark the center or visit a science laboratory to watch water droplets coalesce to form larger raindrops, demonstrating the electrical characteristics of a storm cloud. Now the two streams are passing through an electrostatic field. The drops coalesce, forming larger drops. And then, watch in slow motion the exquisite beauty of a raindrop as it falls to earth. The time-lapse camera helps us see things that happen too slowly to perceive otherwise. This remarkable cinemicrography of chromosomes reproducing is from the film Mitosis. Film can take us into space.
and share many of Darwin's rare observations in the Galapagos Islands that led to his theories of evolution. The Galapagos Islands have been called the Enchanted Isles. Darwin described them as a world within itself. In their oceanic isolation, the process of natural selection has transformed plants and animals into many unique products of evolution. Most of these life forms are still more or less intact, but will they stay that way? We can learn life-saving techniques from this film on choking. Begin with four back blows. If unsuccessful, apply four abdominal thrusts. Back blows dislodge a foreign body. Abdominal thrusts create air pressure to force it out. Our mental horizons can be broadened through a film introduction to children of other countries. We can catch the flavor of the entire Middle Ages at Chart Cathedral, one of the great treasures of Western civilization. We can explain a complex concept in physics through this demonstration of wave action. More enzymes continue this process until two complete molecules of DNA are built up. This is the process of DNA replication. Animation can help us achieve an accurate mental image of complicated subjects. Can't make up or simplify for elementary students principles of economics. Well, why don't you just keep it if you're scared to spend it wrong? And you can buy the right thing when the right thing comes along. Yeah! That's what I'll try. Film can capture a child's fancy. And provide multiple language arts experiences. This demonstrates how effectively film can give new dimensions to an already famous short story. The Lady or the Tiger. All was ready. The signal was given. Now, half the audience had not known that so grand a youth had lived among them. No wonder the princess loved him. She had done what no other person had done. She had possessed herself of the secret of the doors. Following custom, the youth bowed to the king. She knew in which of the two rooms that lay behind the doors stood the open cage of the tiger. And in which waited the lady. Which one? Now the point of the story is this. Did the tiger come out of that door or did the lady? The camera lets us travel into prehistory. From cave paintings to the modern worldwide communications depicted in TV news behind the scenes. Educational films continue to bring the world to the classroom. But behind the camera, and in the control room, lies a world most of us never see. We got a Bob Miller. Stand by, here we go. Okay, stand by. Five. Theme. We'll have a finish better. The six o'clock report in color on the Eyewitness News Team.
That's the motto we adopted at the beginning. Bring the world to the classroom. We thought Edison was a pioneer. Then, when I retired a few years ago, they spoke of me as a pioneer. Along the way, I witnessed many exciting developments, such as the television, the video cassette, along with all the other delivery systems that now exist. As a pioneer in audiovisual education, I would like to use the prerogative of my many years of experience to say we've come a long way. But the pioneering is not yet over. There is still the challenge of the audiovisual revolution.